Welcome to the level 1 equity summary video series. This video is a summary of the reading on overview of equity securities. Types and characteristics of equity securities. Common shares represent an ownership interest in a company and give investors a claim on its operating performance. The opportunity to participate in decision making and a claim on the company's net assets in the case of liquidation. So this is just a basic definition of common shares. In the context of common shares, you can have statutory voting versus cumulative voting. And we saw this briefly in corporate finance, but I'll explain this here. From a small shareholder perspective, cumulative voting is better because let's say that you have 100 shares and let's say that there are two seats open for which we have potential candidates running. So there is an election for seat one, we have A and B. For seat two, we have Mr. C and Mr. D. Now, under statutory voting, what would happen is you have 100 votes for each of these positions. But what if you know Mr. A and think he'll be good on the board, then with cumulative voting, you can take 200 votes and vote for A. So that gives you more power in terms of being able to bring your person on the board. They can be different classes of shares, class A shares, class B shares. So maybe the voting rights might be different across different classes. Callable common shares means that the company that issues the shares has the right to call the shares back at a given price. Puttable common shares gives the shareholder the right to return the shares at a given price to the company. Preference shares are a form of equity in which payments made to preference shareholders take precedence over payments to common shareholders. You can have cumulative and non-cumulative preference shares. In cumulative preference shares, you collect dividends from the past if they were not paid. So these would be preferable over non-cumulative. Participating and non-participating, this refers to the fact that with participating preference shares, the shareholders can get some additional percentage of profit. Convertible preference shares means that they are convertible to common stock. Private equity securities are issued primarily to institutional investors in private placements and do not trade in secondary equity markets. When you have private equity, then companies management can focus on long term value creation because they are not worried about short term targets. These are highly illiquid and potentially high returns. Types of private equity are shown right here and we'll talk about these in alternative investments. Depository receipts. A depository receipt is a security that trades like an ordinary share on a local exchange and represents an economic interest in a foreign company. So for example, on the London Stock Exchange, you might have a company that is from another country. So let's say that you have an Indian company. If their shares are trading on the London Stock Exchange, this would be an example of a depository receipt. Within depository receipts, you can have GDRs and ADRs. A GDR is issued outside the company's home country and outside the United States. ADR is a US dollar denominated security that trades like a common share on, on US exchanges. So for example, Nokia, which is a European company, Nokia's ADRs trade on the New York Stock Exchange. So that would be an example of an ADR. Within ADRs, there are three levels that you need to be aware of. Level one means unlisted. So you might have a company that has shares in America that are being bought and sold, but they are not listed on the exchange. So the listing requirements are minimal. The advantage of this is that you now have a given company in Europe or some other country where their shares are also being purchased by institutional investors in the United States. So your investor base is being broadened. With level two, you have the shares listed on an exchange such as the New York Stock Exchange. So again, 
the investor base is being widened plus there is publicity because the shares are on a public exchange and then level 3 is where shares are on a public exchange and it is actually new shares that are issued which means that funds are being raised in 1 and 2 additional funds are not being raised because in the company's home market a certain number of shares are being bought and then it is based on those shares that the ADRs are being issued. So no additional funds are being raised at level 1 and level 2. At level 3 you have more investors and additional funds are being raised. Risk and return characteristics of equity securities. When you buy a stock you are looking for capital gains so this means the stock price might go up and you will look for a dividend yield foreign exchange gain what does that mean so this means that if you invest in the stock of a company from another country and that other country's currency appreciates then there will be a foreign exchange gain risk of equity securities risk is based on the uncertainty of future cash flows if you buy a stock and you are expecting a certain dividend there is a risk that you will not get that dividend so that's the riskiness we are talking about here you need to be able to compare the risk return characteristics of these types of shares common shares versus preference shares common shares have higher risk and when we have higher risk then we also expect higher return cumulative versus non-cumulative preference shares non-cumulative have higher risk because here we do not get dividends from the past callable versus non-callable callable will have higher risk because the company has the right to call back the shares puttable versus non-puttable here non-puttable will have higher risk equity securities and company value companies issue equity to raise capital and increase liquidity increase liquidity in the sense that when they issue shares they get cash so obviously more cash means that their liquidity improves they can use this money to finance revenue generating activities such as creating new plants they can use the money for acquisitions and also sometimes companies issue shares so they can give so so the shares can be given to employees through option based incentive schemes or the the better way of putting it is companies give stock options to their employees when the stock options are exercised then obviously the company has to issue shares management goal is to increase book value and maximize the market value of equity so this is key the goal of management should be to maximize market value but note that management actions can directly influence book value not market value how can they influence book value they can influence book value by maybe not paying dividends if dividends are not paid then book value will be higher if dividends are paid then book value will be lower also through the manipulation of accounting numbers the book value can be impacted in terms of market value that impact is indirect because if a management team is doing a good job and investors also think so then the stock price and the market value will go up book value and market value are seldom the same the last segment of this reading talks about return on equity which is an important measure to determine whether management is effectively using capital in a company where management is, is doing a good job the ROE which is net income over equity will be relatively high generally ROE is measured as net income over average book value but depending on the context sometimes we also use the beginning book value of equity you need to look at the question and figure out what is being done if you are not sure and you are given beginning equity value and end equity value then use the average ROE increases if income increases at a faster rate than equity so if you have net income over equity and income is going up very fast but equity is going up slowly then what will happen to ROE it will go up but 
is increasing ROE always good? The answer is not necessarily. It is possible that net income is going down and equity is going down, but equity is going down at a much faster rate. Then also the ratio will go up, but clearly that is not a good scenario. If you found this lecture helpful, then I'll be very grateful if you can do three things for me. Number one, like this video. Number two, like my Facebook page. And number three, visit analystforum.com and there add my logo to your studying with profile. You can see this slide for help on how to do that. Thank you very much and good luck with your studies.